First Thessalonians chapter five, verses four and five. Let's start from there. Yes, no. Amen. Be you brethren. Be but you brethren are not in darkness that 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 day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Amen. You are not of the night or of darkness. You are not of the night nor of the darkness. Of the darkness. Amen. Amen. There are people on earth who belong to the night, who are of darkness, and that simply means there are many things they're supposed to know that they do not that they do not know. They do not see clearly because there's no light. But he said it is not so with us. We know what we're supposed to know. And that's an advantage. And part of why we are doing ministers training is to make sure that what the Bible makes as an assumption becomes a reality. That we are not people of the dark. Darkness has to do with what is hidden. It has to do with ignorance. We talk of light. We talk of explosion. We talk of knowledge. So when you know what you're supposed to know, you're operating on that light. When you don't know what you're supposed to know, you're of the dark. You're operating on the darkness. So our prayer is that the grace will help us to be able to operate on that light through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are to look at this minister's conference, we are to begin with a discussion that is very germane, talking about the new creation man. So we shall be looking at the new creation psychology, or the psychology of the new creation. Some of us say new creation. New creation. When you hear the word new creation, it simply makes us to know that there was an old creation. Now God started creation and at the point of creation there was nothing like old or new. It was because there was a second creation that introduced the word old and the new. Please pay much attention. The first point we need to understand is that there are two kinds of creation. The old and the new. Just as we have two testaments or two covenants, the old and the new. Just as we have the two kinds of man on earth, the old man and the new man. The journey will always start with man or creation or covenant in general. At a point in time, something will go wrong that will produce another one. It is only the coming of the second one that introduces the word new. And because there is word new, then there is word old. For instance, in the Bible, we have all the testaments, and we have the New Testament. The Old Testament completely is a Jewish Bible. It's religion. It's the Bible of the Jews. Until today, the Jewish Bible is made up of Genesis to Malachi. And therefore, until today, the Jews do not have Old Testament or New Testament. They just have the testament of the Bible. They just have the Bible, the Hebrew Bible. 
comprising only Genesis to Malachi. It is because Christianity came and introduced from Matthew to Revelation, adding it to the Jewish Bible, that it is now called New Testament. And because it is called New Testament, then that Jewish Bible, Christians call it Old Testament. It is Christians that call it Old Testament. In Judaism, it is not Old Testament. Because it's just have only one testament. You, you talk of old or new when you have two things. If something is only one, it can neither be old or new. It can only be old or new if it is two. But if it's only one, don't talk of old or new. So, the first thing, there are two types of creation. Then, we have the two arms of creation. Please, can somebody come out here? Let us animate. Somebody come and meet me here. For proper understanding, I need somebody to come out. There are two arms of creation. One is called formation. The other is called animation or impartation. There are two arms of creation. One is formation, two is animation or impartation. And that you find in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, which I'll be reading because we are teaching. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 is very popular. It tells us how God molded a man from the dust. And now breathe life. So much should open to Genesis chapter 2 and read for, for us by 7. Now, the woman, the man, if you continue to read the word, the, the, the word man, from the word man, you get the word man you. Yes. That is it. From the woman, the word human. You get the word who moves, and who moves is a type of soil. It all has to do with the formation of man. And that's why man literally means of the earth. Either man, man, you, or woman, who moves, or Adam, Adam. The Hebrew word for the earth is Adam, from where you get the word Adam. Who is the Hebrew chapter? Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Amen. Amen. And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground, mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, mm -hmm. and he became a living soul. Good. There you go. Look at me. This is the first arm of creation is formation. The Lord formed man out of the dead dust of the earth. Now we are here. See man. As at that time, it was not actually man, but the statue. Hands that don't move. Mouth that don't move. Eyes that don't move. Legs that don't move. Therefore, God started with a statue. That statue is what has come down to be known as corpse. So, what God did. Is corpse. Then after God finished with a corpse, God went to the second arm of creation called animation or impartation. So God now breathed the life into what God created. And the hands began to move. Eyes began to move. Then there was now a reactivation. And God said, Man became what? A living soul. A living soul. There's no dead soul. Why is it called a living soul? Okay. It is important that at this point in time, I want us to understand the formation and the animation or impartation made up the complete human being. Outside of the spirit, God, we 
created into man, what you have is corpse. Absent of the corpse that the spirit animated, what you have is spirit. So we have is the soul. Because what I'm trying to let us say that some people say, well, man is made up of spirit, soul, and body. Three things. So that man is a tripartite being. No. So, why? Man has only one nature called the human nature. But this human nature is made up of two components the spiritual and the material. And that's the find in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 362 to 365. And he said that man was a being at once corporeal and the spiritual, material and the spiritual. These two things make up the nature of man. For instance, there's what is known as hypostatic union of Jesus Christ being 100% God and 100% man. Hypostatic union. That's the that term man because man was made in the image. The being at once corporeal and the spiritual, physical and the spirit. That makes up the one nature of man or a combination of two things. Therefore, the composition of man is body and spirit. You cannot have body, spirit, and soul. Meaning that if somebody dies, only two things happen. The body, which is the corpse, returns to the earth, where it's made from. And the spirit returns to God, where it's made from. This is the only two things that happen after death. We don't see three things at the end of man's life. Only two. Spirit, soul. And therefore, you want to be tired? And therefore, what is called soul depends on nomenclature. If you have called man, that man has a spirit and a body, then the soul becomes the couple, marriage, sister Christian. Let us start from marriage. Marriage, when you hear a couple, one couple is a combination of a husband and wife. Marriage between a husband and a wife produces couple. Only this is not couple. Only this is not couple. If that separation is not a couple. So a combination of the body animated by the spirit, you produce a soul. A soul is the interface between the spirit and the body, which is like God. And therefore, once you separate these two, you will not find God again. If you separate body and the spirit, you will not find soul again. But as long as they are together in marriage, there is a God. Once they separate, you cannot have a problem anymore. God will just vanish. What you just have is a man or a woman. But the moment they are in marriage, there is a couple. So it is a product of this marriage that gives birth to God. As long as there is no more marriage, there is no more God. You just, the God will just vanish into the tine. You will not see it anymore. Praise God. Amen. So the word the soul is not different from the body and the spirit, but it's the interface. And so, sometimes, the part, because the soul represents the interface, sometimes the soul is used to refer to a complete human being. The soul that sees it. Sometimes the soul is used to refer to the spirit of man. Because it is something you cannot handle, you cannot see it. You can touch the body, you cannot touch the soul. Nobody has ever seen, say, I touched 
the soul. So it is spirit, which is why the Catholic will answer that our likeness to God is chiefly in our soul. Why is it so? Because the soul is the spirit. So you have soul, the spirit, and you say I have another spirit. That, that means there are two spirits in you. Which is not the Holy Spirit, so, because everyone has a spirit. So if the soul is now different from your spirit, that means you have a spirit, you have a soul. So if you don't want to go dead, where does the soul go? Where does the spirit go? <laughs> there are only two things. The spirit and the body. So if you say body and soul, you are correct. In that case, it is the spirit you are referring to as the soul, because the soul is actually spirit. If you say spirit and the body, you are still correct, because the soul is the spirit. In fact, the Catholic of the Church says that the soul is exactly the form, takes the form of the body, that sometimes it will seem as if it is the same thing. And that is why you can be sleeping on the bed, your body is there, your soul will come out. And when your soul come, comes, comes out of your body and meets me, I will see you exactly because the soul takes exactly the form of the body. And that's why you can see me in your dream, why I'm praying for you, I'm helping you, why I'm lying on my bed, you may not, I may not even know. It's my soul or my spirit that is said. Praise God. Amen. So, formation, impartation. The man became a living soul. And formation is not a living soul. Before the formation, this one is not a living soul. It is the union that now makes it a living soul. And the maiden corpse, spirit in a body. I don't know whether we are together now. All right, I know that is a new thank you, sir. It's a new teaching, but we go and see how much we will be able to realize. So, the passage is Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and also Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Jesus, who man was made in image, even though I'm going to come to it. When man lost that image and failed, Jesus came, and almost Genesis 2 7 was repeated. Jesus took a stage, a year of 30 years, 30 years to be formed. And then after that 30 years, there is the animation or the impartation, and Jesus became Jesus Christ. Why? Is anointed. When Jesus eventually wanted to transform to human beings, he picked 12 apostles and disciples and did formation for three years. But he told them to look to his purpose line, don't even try to do the work until there is an animation, until there is the impartation. So God, God's creation will always be completed by impartation, whether first creation or new creation. That is just the point I want us to understand for now. Praise the Lord. Okay, let us look at our text, open to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Before we go to Ephesians chapter 4, Okay, let's start from there before we look at other things. The glory of creation. Let us look at the vision chapter 4 from verse 17 to 24. The vision, yeah, amen. Chapter 4 from verse 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentile walk. From henceforth, from now, you are different uh -huh. in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding of darken, of darken, being alienated from the life of God. Their understanding is darkened and they are alienated or separated from the life of God. Through the ignorance that is in them, okay. because of blindness of their hearts, who being past feel, 
who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to walk all uncleanness with, with greediness. But you have not so learned, but you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have had him and have been taught by him. If it is actually true, you have had him and have been taught, which is why teaching is very, very important. There are many people who have come to Christ but not actually taught by him. As the truth is in Jesus. Yeah. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. There is an old man that is to be put off, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness. Okay? There is a putting off, and there is a putting on. You have to put off the old man, and to put on the new man. That is the one that is created in righteousness after God. Yes, and holiness, and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, lying speak. That's what I mean. Verse 25. Now. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. So, yeah, everyone has a responsibility of putting off and putting on. The reason for this is because of this union between corpse and the spirit. So, let us see why you have the responsibility of putting off and putting on. Our journey starts. In the first place, there is what we call the glory of creation. We cannot talk of the new creation without understanding the old creation. So we are now in the old creation. There is the glory of creation. And what is that glory of creation? Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. God said, we are to make man in our own image after our likeness so that they will be like us and God made man to be like God and God made them male and female and God blessed them and God empowered them and God put man in the garden and man began to operate just like God and that was why Adam was in dominion Adam was in charge Adam was controlling every other thing created with the grace of God with the power of God with the anointing of God but something happened. Something went wrong with the world creation. What was it that went wrong? Man failed God. Man fell from grace to grass. We are now in Genesis chapter 3. Man ate the forbidden fruits. Man lost the glory of God. As recorded in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Remember, when man did formation, when God did formation of man, man was not a little soul. When the spirit was introduced, man became a little soul. That means the spirit animated the body. The body became active. The body now had a voice. The body can now operate and make demands. So when man did disobey God, the spirit died. The body remained alive. What does that mean? Spirits do not die. Anytime we hear that the spirit died, it means it became inactive. As long as the spirit is united in man, it cannot die. Once it dies, the body returns to corpse. But what happened is that God said to man in Genesis 2 17, the day you eat of this fruit, you shall die. Oh, the, <laughs> the day you eat of this fruit, you shall do what? You shall die. And the man ate the fruit. But it did not die in the body, it died in the spirit. As at this time, the soul, the union is still there, so the soul is activated already by the spirit and has empowered the body. And therefore, the soul is like an interface 
that takes instruction from the spirit and passes to the body. Now the spirit is inactive. It has just become the soul and the body. And the body is now the main thing and is now in charge. Is now leading. And this body that is leading is made up of dust, man, manu, human, humus, Adam, Adam. And when God was punishing man, I mean the devil, in Genesis chapter 3, he said, Dust shall be the food. And this body is dust. Spiritually, God gave the devil authority over the body of man. Now, the body is remaining for the spirit is inactive. And therefore, the devil is now in control of man. Because the man's body is made of, of the dust. So, he did not get to live in the flesh. It's just an aggression to be under the devil. Once anyone is living in the flesh, automatically you under the devil because the flesh is the devil's food, dust. So the devil has given spiritual authority to that body. And so the body is not supposed to operate as it was. But now the body has its own voice, making the minds and even leading. The body supposed to be behind is now in front and is submits to the devil. The devil does not need any excuse, any permission to. Lord is over the body, over the flesh. And that is how man, the lost nature, the true nature. That remains me to tell about the three kinds of nature. There are three kinds of nature. One is the normal human nature, which is the nature God gave man at creation. And this nature is a nature that is neither mortal nor immortal. Man's nature as creation was neither mortal nor immortal. Because according to the history of the church, in Lumen Jesu number two, man was created to be divinized in glory, to grow into divinity. But before man could grow into divinity, he fell. Which is why God said, now that he has fallen, let God prevent him from eating the, from the tree of life. So that he will not become immortal in a fallen state. And God said, the day you meet, you will die. That means you become mortal. God created man, neither mortal nor immortal. But the end is that man should grow into immortality. But before man could grow into immortality, he fell, so he became mortal. And so God said, let him not eat the tree of life, which is the tree of immortality. And so he was not taken in a way from the death, the garden, to prevent him from taking from the tree of eternal life. So man now became mortal. This is how death came in. Man became mortal. And mortality is the not, is not the nature of God. It's the nature of the devil. And because the devil is in control of the flesh, the devil, in the devil's generosity, Deposited mortality, wickedness, evil, sin into the subject, man. And that's how man now got what is known as the depraved nature, or the devil's nature, or the sin nature, which is the devil's nature. So man went from the non human nature to devilish nature. Or divine nature. We will read in 1 Corinthians 15 that human, mere human nature cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He's talking about the fallen nature, the depraved nature, the satanic nature. Since God, man, God only has given man authority on earth, God became interested in man. But man has now fallen. That means that God had lost all of humanity. For all have sinned. God has now lost man. And that's how God lost man on earth. But God did something. What did God do? He now came out of the whole people on earth. He did to one, Abraham, and had a covenant with Abraham. Praise God. He had a covenant with Abraham. And in that covenant, God and Abraham became one. 
God became Abraham. And Abraham became God. By covenant. Covenant makes two people who are just like marriage. But in this covenant, because man is the unequal partner, man did not enter into covenant with God. God entered into covenant with man. I don't know if you know the difference. If you go to Genesis chapter 15, God asked Abraham to bring animal and cut them into pieces. And in the night, God came and passed in between the animals. But Abraham did not pass. It was a unilateral covenant. How covenant is done in the old days is I want to marry sister. She wants to marry me. So that no other person will marry her and I will marry another person. We bring animals and cut the animals into half, into two, and place them like this. Then I will pass in between the animals in figure eight. While I'm passing in between, I'm doing what is called implication. I'm saying, if I disappoint this agreement, let my faith be like this animal spot into two. That means death. Then after me, she will pass in between the half of them in figure eight. And as she's passing, she's using the same words of implication. If I disappoint this covenant or this agreement, let my faith be like these animals. Then it is sin. Well, everybody will go. In the entire Old Testament, everyone that comes on earth is a person without God and without you. So, the devil was in charge of every nation on earth except the Jewish nation. And this was the reason why, when the Jews were taken into exile into Babylon, Daniel prayed, God sent an answer, but a demon refused God's angel from delivering message to them. You know why? Because they were not in the Jewish soil, the only soil that belonged to God. They were not in a place that belonged to them. They were in devil's territory. That was the power of that gene. Amen. So that became the situation of this. Then something happened. God now decided to universalize what was localized. What was it that was localized? The Jewish privilege. Which was only for the Jews. Abraham's government was only for the Jews. Now God decided to make it a universal thing. And that was why God had sent Jesus. According to Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. At the appointed time, God sent his son, born of a woman, to do what? To redeem people under the law. Now, that means that the reason for Jesus coming called the incarnation is not for the redemption. And the redemption is for people under the law. And who are the people under the law? The two, no, the two tribes on earth. Only the Gentiles and the Jews. But the Jews are the ones who are of God. Nevertheless, the idea of God is, is a another of covenant. It's God's blessing. It is God in beauty of righteousness, not in pattern. There's a difference between righteousness imputed and righteousness imparted. Remember, we talked about formation and impartation. Righteousness imparted is when it is inside in the spirit. Imputed is when it is covering. Like this place is covering us now. If it is ready, it will not touch us because we are under the covering. That is righteousness imputed. All personal righteousness is imputed. It's just a covering, it's not part of them. Praise God. Are we together so far? Because we have to understand the sequence. Nevertheless, even though God was covering the people of God, called the Jews, the Jews actually are among the fallen race. They are among the children of Adam. And that was why Jesus shocked them one day. How? He said, excuse me. I have an announcement. They say, what is it? He says, I know your father. The Jews are surprised. He said, Abraham, your father. The Jesus said, no. Who is your father? Jesus said, the devil is your father. These Jews 
Jews that were enjoying everything that God had, that were telling God in the Old Testament, so say, Your father is not God, your father is the devil. And that's recorded in John chapter 8, verse what? Verse 44. The father is the devil. And that was not good because that was true. And it is because their father was the devil and not God that God dealt with them in a process known as adoption. Some will say adoption. I need someone to come out again. Some will come and meet you quickly. Some will come and meet me. Some, some let us explain. One person to come out and meet me quickly, quickly, quickly. Hello? Hi. Are you an adopted child of God? Yes. Are you an adopted child of God? Yes. You stay here. Now, do you know the meaning of adoption? Adoption is only possible for me on two or three occasions. The first I'm, I'm talking about physical, so I don't understand this. Why I can adopt this my son is because I am impotent. That's the one reason. Number two, why I can adopt this one is maybe there, there is a law that forbids me from giving birth to children. Like in China, other places where there is a number of children you, you cannot exceed. You cannot exceed one child or two children. So you can now adopt. Or maybe that he suffered a lot of orphanage out of love. I want adoption. Everybody look up. Look up. If I am his father, that means that is my wife, and we give back to him, can I adopt him? No. So you don't adopt somebody born into your family. That means you cannot be born and still adopted into the same family. Two of us. It becomes an insult if that is my wife and we get back to him. It becomes an insult to say he is our adopted child. To say that he is our adopted child simply means that he is not born in your family. And that he is our adopted child means he must have a father, true father, somewhere. Hello? So if, if you say that God's adopted child, then Satan is your new father. Any Christian that says he's an adopted child of God, because in his spirit there can only be two fathers, God or Satan. So if you are anyone who is an adopted child of God, Satan is his true father. Just as Jesus told the truth, Satan was your father. Because they are adopted, that is where we get the word, the spirit of adoption. It's an Old Testament phraseology. But it's a big that out of ignorance, Christians are using it. You cannot be adopted when you are born. And God has shown you, in the entire Old Testament, nobody was born into the family of God. Apart from Adam. That is why, and after Adam, no other person called God the Father in the Old Testament except Jesus. The, our Father, the prayer of our prayer, nobody prayed it in the Old Testament. Nobody could be prayed. Why? Because God was not their true Father. God was their adoptive Father. Father by adoption. But God does not want to have children by adoption. So, anybody that you are talking has he is coming to a family with a strange life. Another life, the life of his for her true father. I know, are you following? Yes. Anyone adopted into any family is coming here with the life of his for her true father. Whether you know the true father or not, he is coming there with his and God does not want another person's blood in his own family. He wants to have his own life. And we are now in the final second of your Adam. The gospel according to John, chapter 10, verse 10. And what did Jesus say? In case you don't know why I came, I came that they may have life. A prophetic with vital habits. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus, I came that they may have life. The Jews 
and the Gentiles. The Jews did not have a life. The Gentiles did not have a life. They did not have the life of God. Praise God. But were they there? You may ask me. No. They were not there. They were having the fallen life. The lower life. According to Greek, it is called bios. Which is the lower kind of life. From where you get the English concept of biology. The story of life. But Jesus came saying, I think that let me have Zoe. The Greek said that Zoe is the higher life. That Zoe is the eternal life. That Zoe is the God kind of life. That Zoe is the supernormal, supernatural life. While by us is human, normal human life. So what Jesus brought was the God kind of life. The supernatural life, eternal life. And he said, I came that they may have it. Meaning, even the Jews were not having it, and the Gentiles were not having it. So Jesus brought life. Someone said, Jesus brought life. Jesus brought life. And we together so far, then we now go to the cross. Jesus came that they may have life. And he began by John teaching people the way of God. And then on the cross, there was substitution. Jesus took the place, since I was standing on this from, Jesus took the place of man. The Bible said, He who, second uh, Corinthians 5 to 5, God made him who, he who knew no sin to be sin. Now, this is substitution. Hello? I think I'll be another person. Another person come. Substitution. Now, this sister is in prison. Another person come out. She's in prison. She's condemned to die. She cannot help herself. This is humanity. And humanity in the Old Testament is made up of Jews and Jews and this is the Old Testament humanity. Who did Jesus come to die for? The humanity. Who, 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 who does humanity mean? Jews and Gentiles. These are the only thing existing in the Old Testament. Jews and the whole world is summarized to Jews and Gentiles. And Jesus came to die for them. So what did Jesus do? Please go there. He removed man out of bondage from him. And Jesus now entered bondage. Substitutional body is not taking the place of man. That simply means she or humanity is no longer in bondage. This is the meaning of redemption. Redemption means that man is no longer in bondage. Jesus now in bondage for man. Man has been redeemed. Who has redeemed? Man. Who does man mean here? Jews and Gentiles. Have you ever seen Christ? Has Christ come into this picture? No. Who did Jesus redeem? Humanity. Who is humanity that Jesus redeemed? Jews and Gentiles. But we are going to do a very big thing. Jesus redeemed only two classes of people. Under the general head of humanity or man, but Jews and Gentiles. So that is what made Jesus now a sinner. Not like a witness for his now carrying sin. But this person that is redeemed, as he came out, is still a Jew. As he came out, is still a Gentile. That means there was no change in the spiritual of humanity because Jesus redeemed the man. It's not that they are no longer in prison. But there is no transformation. Nothing happened to the spirit of Jews or Gentiles. Is still a Jew, but no longer in prison. Is still a Gentile, but no longer in prison. The ultimate reason is not just to make you remain a Jew or remain a Gentile, but this is the process. So, first of all, Jesus took the place. So, the sin was transferred into Jesus, into Jesus, and darkness took over. And that's what led Jesus to hell. Second Corinthians 5.14 says, Caritas Christi, Oh, Jesus, the Lord of Christ, 
All the sons of the sun. If one died for all, then all we are dead. The second person by 14. Okay, so Jesus now died. So he went to hell. That means man has died. Humanity does not exist in the reality anymore. But all of a sudden, in hell, he conquered the devil and came back to life again. Meaning resurrection. Remember, this is still Jews and Gentiles. We are together so far. Okay. Now, this is where Christianity starts. Now, this one has conquered death, devil, grave, and now it says there is need. As I took your place, there is need for you to come back to me and accept me for doing all these things for you. You are no more in bondage, but you, you still don't have that life of God. Because nothing has happened to the spirit of humanity, which is where we are now in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse what? Verse 17. I need somebody to tell us to come out. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any man is in Christ, come out. If any man is in Christ, he becomes what? A new creation from this way. Now, this any man refers to the redeemed. This any man refers to the Jews and to the Gentiles. Because remember, the Bible said he died in order to make out of the two. I don't to read. To bring out of the two a single new man. Out of the two. But for this two, it means that the Jew will have to enter into Christ. And in Christ, the Jew will die. And come out the Christian. The gentile will have to enter into Christ, and the gentile will have to die in Christ and come out a Christian. This is still holy creation, but no matter what creation is put into Christ, it will come out a new creation. What it means? Jew, gentile, holy creation has to die in Christ. Not to come out as a new That's why redemption does not give you the life of God. Is no one redeemed the Lord? They are redeemed. Is no one saved the Lord? Saved. Is no one is saved. So I give that to my eyes. Praise God. Is no one redeemed? Yes. Okay, who is redeemed? Who is redeemed? No. The ones that Christ died for. Follow me, so I understand Christianity. The whole world was redeemed by the death of Christ. It doesn't require man's effort, it's the love of God. John 3 16. Yeah. But if you believe, it requires your effort. Salvation requires effort. Redemption does not require effort. The whole world has been redeemed, but Jesus died for the whole world. Yes. But the death of Jesus does, does, not, does not do anybody any spiritual good. The only thing the death of Jesus did is that he brought man out of the prison. But the one brought out of the prison is still a Jew or a Gentile. So this Gentile has to do something after resurrection. He cannot enter into Christ before resurrection. Because Christ before resurrection is the one that has not paid the price, came to pay the price. Having paid the price, has now resurrected a new being, a second Adam. Okay? So the two that is redeemed and the gender that is redeemed will now have to enter into Christ for death and resurrection. And his resurrection as a new creation. This is now the beginning of the new creation. This one was not existing when Jesus was born. This one was not existing when Jesus died. This one was not redeemed because it was not existing. Jesus did not help this one because this one never needed them. The one that Jesus helped is the Jew and the Gentile. The one that Jesus redeemed is the Jew and the Gentile. The one that Jesus died for is the Jew and the Gentile. Death and resurrection 
So then they will find their way back into Christ and will be born again as new creation. And therefore, it's out of ignorance to say that Jesus redeemed this one. It's out of ignorance to say Jesus died for this one. Jesus never died for new creation. Jesus did not redeem the new creation. Jesus died for the old creation. Jesus redeemed the old creation. The reason for incarnation is redemption. The reason for redemption is new creation. So, to know whether you are redeemed the Lord is to answer the question, am I an old creation or a new creation? So, let me ask you, are you an old creation or a new creation? Did Jesus redeem you? No. 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 Jesus didn't redeem the new creation. The new creation has no redemption. Now let me try to grammar it again. Anything created by God is okay. The old creation was created good. But the old creation lost that goodness in Genesis chapter 3. The new creation is created good. We are yet to see where the new creation lost that goodness. It has not been lost. And that's why the new creation will never be redeemed. Can never be redeemed. The reason is this. Should I tell you this? God the Creator deals with man not according to individuals, but according to the head. Which is why when Eve was the first person that took the forbidden tree, when Eve took the forbidden tree, man did not want to say. That means it was not said. Her eyes did not open. Do you know why? The head of humanity was Adam. It was when Adam ate that Eve's eye opened. It was when Adam ate that it became sin for Eve. God deals with man according to And therefore, because Adam was the head of humanity, eventually Adam ate it became sin, everybody has become a sinner. And that you find in the Catholic of the Catholic Church of about 400 to 404. And the Catholic of the Church says that everybody was in Adam as one body of one man. Quoting St. John Thomas of Aquinas. And that by that form that Adam has communicated to humanity a weakened nation, the pride of grace. And that is why, when you go to the church, original sin is a sin contracted and not committed. A state and not an act. That is the of the Catholic Church. You read from 400 to 404, that's what I'm just finished with. Which is why in the Council of Trent in 1546, the church promulgated infant baptism. Be as long as it's Jew or Gentile, is a sin. Whether he has done anything good or bad does not matter. What matters is who is his head. First Adam is a sin. A child giving birth to today is a sin. Why? Not because the child has committed a sin. The church is a sin contracted, not committed. As long as that child is under the first Adam, is a sinner. Meaning, being a sinner has nothing to do with your action. This is what many Christians do. And so they keep saying, I am a sinner. And they say, Why is it? If I tell them I'm not a sinner, they say, So you mean you don't commit sin? Because they are ignorant of what it means to be a sinner. Even if you think that anybody who commits sin is a sinner. No, sir. That is wrong. It's how you say ignorance. A child that is giving birth to today, who has never even thought, is the person a sinner or a saint? It's a sinner. It's a sinner. So, what has he done since this committee sinner makes more than a sinner? Nothing. The only thing is because of who is his head. As long as your head is a sinner, whether you do good or bad, you are a sinner. God relates to humanity according to their head. And the church says that. Righteousness is the reverse side of original sin. So you cannot understand here if you don't understand here. Because this is the one in Christ. And when Jesus came, he did not answer 
Abraham. He did not answer Elijah. What did he answer? Adam. So there are two Adams. The first Adam and the second Adam. What it means who you are is whether you are under the first Adam or whether you are under the second Adam. As long as you are under the first Adam, you are a sinner. Whether you have ever done anything bad. As long as you are under the second, that's the first Adam. As long as you are under the second Adam, you are righteous, you are a saint, you are a good Christian. Even if you have never done any good. It's not about you. It's about your position. Position under Adam, sinner. Position under the first Adam, sinner. Position under the second Adam, sinner. And therefore, if you are a new creation, it's a great height of ignorance and an insult to say that you are a sinner. You all give you a sinner. But just say, my head is a sinner. You are insulting Jesus. For a Christian to say he's a sinner, he's just saying that Jesus Christ is a sinner. You are not why because I'm getting you there. Because you don't understand Christianity. Praise God. That is why I am taking my time. Now look at what is here. The Jew, the Gentile. I normally use yam as an example. Look at you. Now. If you plant yam, what do you have best? Yam. Yam. Okay. Is it the same yam you plant that you have best? No. Alright. So when the Jew, who is a sinner, or the Gentile, who is a sinner, is planted as a young into the womb of the earth called Jesus, he is harvested as the same as a young, but not the same young that was planted. That is why when the sinner comes into Christ, he resurrects as a saint. Exactly. He may still be wearing the same face, the same picture, walking in the same office, but it's no longer the same. But the old things have passed away. It's a new creation. So I say new creation. What's the meaning of new? Do you know why Ian is called New Year? Do you know why New Year is called New Year? Correct. And it was not existing before. Why New Year is called New Year? It has never been seen before. Is new. It was not existing. So if this is new creation, and you still say Jesus died for this, and now what I'm just saying when you say Jesus died for this one, I'm just saying that this is old creation. Because Jesus died for old creation, he didn't die for new creation. New creation was not existing. If you are buying fertilizer, you are buying fertilizer for your old yam to plant it. This is not the yam you planted. The one you planted has died. If you are cutting the yam for planting, you never cut this one. This is the yam you are. Anything you are doing is not for this. But this is a product of that. If it's the same yam that you plant, that you still harvest, it cannot be called a new yam. So a new creation is not an old creation washed. It's not a sin washed. Is new. Don't say it's new. Don't you know the meaning of new? Yes, sir. Never existing before. So it's an insult to say that Jesus died for, for, for a new creation. That's an insult. You are not then saying that he's an old creation. It's an insult to say that this new creation is a sinner. We are not saying it's, a, it's an old creation. We are not saying that the, the head is the older. This one is in the it was never. Under the older man, so it was never a sin. Never it was never. That's the middle of all the things are passed away. All things have become. Am I showing you a picture? Yes. Are you sure you understand? Yes. Do you agree with me? Yes. Okay. Now, Jew or Gentile, you give birth to a child today. Is the child is now a saint? The same. The same. Now you bring this child for baptism. Today, okay, let's give back the child in January 10. 10. Now you bring this child to baptism in March 15. After the baptism, the child is now what? The saint. The saint. Okay. 
Next year, when will you celebrate the baptism of the first day of your child? Which day? Are you a man? Are you a man? I ask this question. After I ask you, which of them is Nebo? Because a Jew cannot say that a Samaritan is right. The Lord has said to Jesus, the one who helped you. So in that, which day will you celebrate the best day of that child? Let's see. 10th of January. Is it not what I all of you are celebrating? Because we are ignorance of ignorance of Christianity. Now, this penny has become a new creation, but we choose to celebrate the birth of a good creation. <laughs> this penny has become a saint, but we choose to celebrate the birth of a sinner. Worst still. Someone say worst. That sinner died in Christ just as old young dies in the earth. Meaning that what we are celebrating does not exist anymore. God has risen on death, the world does not exist. There is no record. Be- because the old young had to die for a new one to come. So that child that was born on 10th January died. So we are celebrating, if you are celebrating the death, you are celebrating the birth of a dead person. The birth of a dead child. So the right time, the right day to celebrate the birthday is 15th March, which is the birth of a saint, the birth of a new creation, and the birth of a child. And guess what? In Psalm 86, 87, verses 6 and 7, the Bible says, Heaven opens record for anyone that is born in Zion. Yes, Have you read the Bible before? Now, that 10th January, that baby was born in Nigeria, but that was born in Zion. So, heaven has no record of any birth in 10th January. The day heaven has record is 15th, that day is recorded. So, so, and so, is born there. It's in the Bible. Some days, it's written by 6 and 7, right? That so, so, that on heaven's record register, it will be recorded that so and so has been born in her. That will be born again, born into heaven. That will be the citizenship. Is now recorded in heaven. And so, next thing you are celebrating on the that you are calling God. How come we don't know about that? They will go to heaven's place. There's no real record that someone was, was born in our family from heaven. We <laughs> are calling God. Which is why you will not see me telling anybody about the record. Happy birthday. Nor the photos I put Except you show that like, the day you are celebrating is your baptism day. Which is the day you are born again. Somebody who did not do infant baptism. Praise God. Amen. Whether infant baptism, adult baptism, anybody born on earth, as long as under the first of you continue to be a sinner, it is the day you are born again that your name enters heaven's register. It's not like a child in the womb. Does Nigeria record somebody a child that is still in the womb? It's not when you are born into Nigeria and Nigeria will take record. It's not when someone is born again. It's because nobody has taught us. There are a lot of things we don't know in Christianity because teachers don't know what they should know. And people are not properly taught. Please return. So ask someone by that, are you only creation or new creation? <laughs> so please, when you are celebrating the birth of a sinner, hello? When you are celebrating the birth of a sinner that has even died, stop telling us that God has added the year. Stop involving God. He wants God to be not It's not going to happen. They celebrate with it that God has added the year. What do you mean by God has added the year? Do you know the rule of addition? Every birthday is a reduction, not an addition. I don't say God has added the year. I will match. If God created you to live 80 years on this earth, it's only when you live 81 years that God has added a year. Mm-hmm. Every year you yes, celebrate is a reduction to your years. You are getting closer to your year. Yes. <laughs> 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 Praise God. Ignorance. Ignorance. So, 
this issue of new creation is so deep. And many Christians, that's why you say child of God, say, I, I am an adopted child of God. Like that means that you are a new father if God has adopted you. That means you are not born into his family. Or you don't know that you church in the family of God. Yes, sir. 1 Timothy 10, verse 15. says, the church is the family of God. John chapter 1, verse 13, say, we are, I, I don't know whether we have enough time before the reason so. So we are born not by the will of man. Mm-hmm. It's the one you see that is born by the will of man. Then John chapter 3 says there are two beds. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Then that which is born of the spirit. How can you be celebrating flesh and existing on the spirit? That there are a lot of things we need to know about Christianity. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, open to Galatians chapter 6, let's read verses 14 and 15. He is a new creation. New creation. Chapter 6. Galatians 6, verses 14 and 15. Praise the Lord. Amen. But God forbid that I should glory, I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availed anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many it's okay, but what? A new creature. A new creation. So I'm about to say new creation. As long as Christ is concerned, circumcision means Jews. All circumcision means Gentiles. They don't matter. What matters is what? The new creation. Are you a new creation? Yes. Are you a new creation? Yes. Okay, let me jump some things and let's look at what I call the new creation vocabulary. It's my title. I'm asking the modern. Because we are getting distracted. New creation vocabulary. Open to Isaiah chapter 10, verse 24. Joel chapter 10, verse 10. New creation vocabulary. So what should we for us? Isaiah 33, verse 24. Joel chapter 10, verse 10. Amen. Isaiah 33 24 says, And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be given their iniquity. Shall, shall be forgiven. Shall be forgiven their iniquity. Please again, who shall not do what? And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. It's alright. The people that dwell there. It's okay, it's okay. The inhabitants of Zion. Shall not say I am sick. It's an error for a Christian to say I am sick. The reason is what we call the duality of existence. Do I tell the Because there's power in confession. Do I tell Amen. Beat your plum shell into soul and your plumbing hooks. Into step. Yes. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Why not let the weak say, I am weak? Why should the weak say, I am strong? Because we work by faith and not by sight. We don't confess what we see, we confess what we believe. We confess what we want to see, not what we see. Praise God. Second Corinthians 5 7 says we walk by faith and not by sight. So there's what is known as new creation vocabulary. You don't confess what other people confess. Hello? The new creation is more than an ordinary man. Do you remember that in some eight you have say you are God, but you will die like what? Like men, because you do not know. Ignorance. Do you remember that Jesus called the first book Satan? 
Why? Get to the answer because you think like man, think like human being. A new creation is much more than a human being. It carries the life of God. It's Christ. That is why the person of the church says in number 782, talking about the seven characters of people of God. He said they are a messianic people. And because the same anointing flow from the head to the body, they are Christians. Christ Christians. Number 7895, the church says, Spotty said the gospel of people, let us rejoice. Not just that we have become Christians or have become Christ Himself. Because if He is the head and we are the body, that's the head and the body make up the Christus totus, the total Christ. That the church is one with the Lord. So if you say you are a sinner, you don't say that Jesus is a sinner. Number 796. He said, whether he speaks as the head, ex personal capitis, or he speaks as the body, ex personal corporis. That is the same. That Jesus is both the bridegroom and the bride. That Jesus is both the bridegroom. No, no, don't push me into marriage. But that's what when I teach on marriage. Maybe you don't know the danger of money. Because the bridegroom is a Christ. The bride is a Christ. Anything you do to your wife, you are persecuting Jesus. Because Jesus is both the bridegroom and the bride. And when he returns, he will pay the bridegroom as he presented him as a bridegroom. And pay the bride as he presented him as a bride. Which means Christian marriage is the union of Christ and Jesus. He aka. Jesus Christ. <laughs> mystery. It's a mystery. Come to Ephesians chapter 5. Marriage is never about the man and the woman. It's about Christ and the church. Man and woman are specimen, representatives. This is not the marriage to us. Praise, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. New uh, creation vocabulary. Let's look at the new creation nature. New creation nature. Okay. Attributes. I think I've talked about the nature that there are three nature: human nature, normal nature, deprived nature, and then the recreated or regenerated nature. Second Peter chapter one, verse four. The first book. He says, through this, the greatest and priceless promises have been lavished on us that through them you should share the divine nature and escape the corruption life in the world through the southern passion. Divine nature is the nature of the new creation. We share it. Divine nature made available to the believer is the antidote to the corruption of this world. John don't give thanks to his close ally Peter, and this is what John said. He said, We are declaring unto you what we have seen and heard, so that you too may share our life. Our life is shared with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. First John chapter 1, verse 3. I said, This is my problem to understand that we are sharing the same life with God. That our life is shared with the Father and the Son. That the new creation has the same life. That's Zoe. That's going God kind of life. That is the same. That's why Jesus said, why I came is that they may have it. In John chapter 3, we saw a teacher that stoned students. And he came to Jesus. He said, Nobody can do what you are doing if God is not with us. And Jesus said, looked at him and said, The reason why we are confused is because they did not burn you well. How are you doing, the devils? They did not burn you well. He said, 
said, I said, yes. They did not know you were. Do you know why he was not born where? Because he was born only once. And so Jesus said, except a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom. So there is a first birth, sinner. There is a second birth, saint. Except a man is born again. First birth, old creation. Second birth, new creation. And Nick was more confused. Can I enter the source of ways? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And the question is, are you born again? Are you born of the spirit? So do you know who you are? First, James chapter 1 verse 18 says, God of his own will gave birth to us. So you are born by God, so you cannot adopt you if you are born. Except if you are not born, that's when you should adopt you. It's an insult to tell your father who gave birth to you that you are his adopted child. What an insult. Except if you are not born. Amen. Amen. So what are the attributes of this new creation's nature? One. It is a life of God. First John chapter 1 verse 2 said that life was made visible. We saw it and we are giving our testimony. The candle to the eternal life, which was present to the Father and has been revealed to us. The nature of new creation is the life of God. Number two, it is spiritual. And that is because God is the Spirit. And according to John 4 24, those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. That nature number three is eternal. God is immortal or eternal. And so His nature also has to be eternal. And that's why the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6 16, He alone is immortal. But He has communicated that immortality. With the man. He has shared it with the man. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 16. It is the kingdom life. It is the nature of people that are born from above. Born in God's kingdom. It is incomparable. It is indestructible. The new creation life. Finally, the new creation attributes. What are the attributes of a new creation? Number one, he is God. Someone say he is God. Are you a new creation? Yes. You are God. Someone say I am God. I am God. Psalm 8 verse 6 says you are God. I say all of you are children of the most high God. I want to show you that true picture. <laughs> a woman was instantly healed while I was ministering on this topic that man the new child, the child of God is God. Praise God. No, if you are born by God, what are you? You are a king. If you are born by God, God is a daddy. What are you? Fuck you. Praise God. If you are born by a lion, what are you? You are a god. If you are born by a lion, if you are born by a snake, guess what? You must belong. <laughs> Two of us. So Jesus revealed this truth in John 10, verse 10 to 35. You are God. See, the scripture cannot be broken. To so read it until it becomes internalized. John 10, that is what you can just see it. The scripture cannot be written in the body of one man, and the scripture cannot be broken. You know, I say you are God. Number two, the new creation man is the spirit. John chapter 3, verse 6. What is born of human nature is human. And what is born of the spirit is spirit. God, the one you call father, is never father of any flesh. Hebrews 12, verse 6. He is only the father of spirits. Hebrews 12, 9. He is the father of spirits. Praise God. 
So if you are convinced that you are spirit, go back to John 26 to 8 and read again that the spirit, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is the spirit. And you say, if wind blows like the wind, you can know the wind is blowing, but you cannot tell whether it's coming or going or something like that. And you say, that is how it is. It is anyone who is born of the spirit. Amen. That means, if you are born of the Spirit and you are like wind, nobody can predict you. Nobody can stop you. You are uncatchable. You are unkillable. You are unstoppable. You are indestructible. You are unquenchable. And so it is. Let me hear you, man. Amen. So the question is can a witch bewitch the wind? Can aspects kill the wind? Can drop catch the wind? Can I drop us drop the wind? Someone say I am like wind. Jump up, jump up, jump up, say I know who I am. Jump up, say I know who I am. Can yes, I be a psychic the wind? Can that man examine the wind? Do you know who you are? That is your human identity. You have to believe that it is so. Who is a new creation? He's a believer. He's in Christ. If you are looking for him, you find him in Christ. Where will you see him? In Christ. Who is a new creation? He is a Christian. That means he's just like Christ. Romans 8, verse 29. Being a Christian is not in answering the name, but having the character. So that Jesus will be truly the elder brother, not just in semblance, but in resemblance. Praise God. Praise God. Because first John chapter 4, verse 17 says, even in this world, we are is not in the next world but even in this world that's why I say you have seen me has seen the father finally who is a new creation he is a dead graduate hello Hi. he is a dead graduate as you graduate from primary school to second school. If you are related from primary school to second school, if they are much not in primary school, will they go and pass you before you pass with that school? No. First John chapter 5. No, John chapter 5, verse 24. He says, Anybody that believes has eternal life. And will not be brought to judgment because he has graduated from death to life. Is a death graduate, and that is repeated in First John chapter three, verse fourteen. And it says, "We know, we know that we have graduated, we have passed from death unto life." First John chapter three, verse fourteen. Ask the Lord, do you know <laughs> who is the new creation? Is above flesh and death. And that you find in John chapter 1, verse 13. His nature is what Latin calls supera natura. Super natural. He is the possessor of eternal life. First John chapter 5, verse 11. Finally, he is light. He is light. These are the attributes of the new creation. Everybody stand on your feet. Everybody stand on your feet. First John chapter 3 verse 1. If you have a memory pass, let's read it. So we are in first John chapter 3 and verse 1. 
Behold, what man of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, mm -hmm. that we should be called the sons of God. Yeah. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Behold, the man of love the Father has bestowed upon us, Behold, the man of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, that we should be called the children of God. Behold, the man of love the Father has bestowed upon us, Behold, the man of love the Father has bestowed upon us, should be called the sons of God, that we should be called the children of God. Amen. Amen. Someone shout amen. amen.